Hey, what's up there, so first? Today I'm going to show you how you can diagnose problems with your car's AC system. Alright, but before we go any further, if you haven't watched my uh, first video, which was on uh, how your car's AC system works, I suggest you watch that one first. I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen. I'll also put a link to it on the description box uh, for this video. Uh, in that video, I go over uh, how the system works, what are the different components that make up the system, and what each one does. And if you watch that one first, then this video, uh, which is going to be on how to diagnose problems with the system, will make a lot more sense to you. Also, for those people that have just stumbled upon this video because their cars uh, AC stopped working and did a search on YouTube and uh, this video came up, uh, I suggest you watch this video first. Uh, the, the most probable cause of your car's AC not working is probably due to uh, low refrigerant in the system. And in this video, I'll show you how you can uh, check for that and also how to safely add refrigerant to your car's AC system and uh, get your AC working again. Alright, now the proper way of uh, diagnosing problems with the car's AC system is to use an AC pressure gauge set. Now, if you don't have one of those and can't get your hands on one, uh, there's a couple other things you can do to try to narrow down your problem, but uh, I strongly suggest you try to buy or rent an AC pressure gauge set. And an AC pressure gauge set looks something like this. Uh, it's got two gauges. This one's going to measure the pressure that's going to be on your uh, low pressure side. This one's going to measure the pressure that's, that's going to be in your uh, high pressure side and they're going to connect by the way of these uh, hoses and these quick connect couplers to the little ports that you're going to have uh, one on each side, you're going to have one port on the high side on the AC line on that side and you're going to have one on the AC line that's going to be on the low side and these connect to those and then you get the pressure that's on the each side of the system. Alright, here's a closer look and we also have this yellow hose which uh, just uh, you would unscrew from here but this is only uh, used for adding refrigerant to the system. The way this works is basically you just screw this on top of the can of refrigerant you have and then you add it to the system. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to stick to running diagnostics on an AC system. And I should also mention that these two knobs, well, they're supposed to be two knobs. I've lost one. There's supposed to be a red one here. These two knobs will uh, have to be turned all the way to the right or in a closed position. Uh, you only turn these counterclockwise and open them if you're either adding refrigerant to the system or you're going to run a vacuum on the system. All right, so for doing diagnostics, all you have to do is basically make sure these two are closed and you put the, these quick connect couplers on the fittings that are your AC lines. And to clarify, you're still going to get your pressure readings from your high side and the low side with these knobs closed. All right, great. Now that you know how an AC pressure gauge set looks like, now let's talk about uh, what you can do to diagnose problems with your AC system if you don't have a gauge set. And uh, actually, before we get any further, I think I need to mention that in order for you to be able to do any kind of diagnostics, you're AC compressor clutch must be engaging. And if it's not engaging, again, it's uh, probably due to low refrigerant in your AC system. And again, I suggest you watch that video that I showed you a link earlier uh, when I started this video. And uh, then if your AC compressor clutch is engaging and you're still not getting cold air coming out of your vents, then you can come back to this video. Uh, also, if you try to re add refrigerant to the system and you find out you have a leak, uh, just but you can't find out where it's leaking from then I uh, recommend you watch this video. I'll put a link to this one right here. In this video I'll show you how you can uh, find uh, small and large leaks in your AC system. Uh, it's an easy and practical way that pretty much any kind of any duty -do software can do. Alright so if you don't have an AC pressure gauge set here's what you can do. Uh, just get in your car, turn it on, turn your AC on, turn it to the max and then uh, wait a couple of minutes. Then what you want to do is just uh, Go around, touch the different AC lines after each component and uh, try to tell their temperature difference. And let's say uh, we start at the AC compressor. If you put our hand on the line that comes out of AC compressor and goes to our AC condenser, this line should be very warm to the touch. In fact, it should be about 100, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's because whenever you compress gas, which is what we're doing with our AC compressor to our uh, AC uh, refrigerant, its temperature rises. All right, now I spent a couple of minutes with our AC running and uh, on this card, the line on the right here is the one that's for our high pressure side, which is going to our AC condenser. And that would be the one that uh, you would need to uh, touch and see whether it's hot or not. But I'm going to be using this infrared thermometer so you guys can actually see the temperature of that line. All right, here we go. So it looks like we got about 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit which is good and it means that our compressor is doing its job which is to compress our refrigerant. Alright great, so we got about 110 degrees Fahrenheit on this line 
And uh, what we need to do next is to try to feel for or measure the temperature that's on this line that's coming out of our AC condenser. And the temperature on this line should be about uh, 50 degrees cooler than the temperature of the line that was going to the AC condenser. All right, so here's our receiver dryer on this car and here's our uh, AC line that comes out of our AC condenser and goes to our receiver dryer. All right, so it looks like we got about 81, 82 degrees Fahrenheit on this line, which is only about 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the line that was going to the AC condenser. But I guess that's somewhat normal since uh, this is probably the original AC condenser that's on this uh, 1995 Toyota Camry. So there, as you saw, we only had about uh, 80 degrees on this line which was uh, just about 30 degrees cooler than the line that was going to the AC condenser. But I guess that's somewhat expected since, again, this is a pretty old car and that condenser is probably the original condenser. It's probably just not working as efficient or it may even be uh, starting to clog up. But uh, if, you, if the numbers before and after your AC condenser are about the same, then uh, you want to make sure that nothing is blocking in front of your AC condenser. There's no leaves or dirt and debris blocking it. And uh, also you want to make sure that your uh, AC uh, fan is working properly as well. All right, next you want to feel for and see uh, if this line that's coming out of the receiver dryer is uh, any cooler than the line that goes to it. Uh, it's uh, generally speaking, it should be, I guess, about uh, 15 degrees cooler than the line going to the receiver dryer. Now on this car, it's very hard to show you, so we'll skip this uh, step, but uh, I think you guys get the idea. All right, next, uh, ideally, what you want to try to do is to Measure the temperature of your, the part of the AC system that's right after your expansion valve or orifice tube. Uh, this part is going to be the coldest part of your AC system and uh, it also is going to indicate whether your expansion valve or orifice tube is working properly. The problem is though on a lot of cars this is uh, very hard to get to. Same goes for your evaporator. These are usually underneath your dash somewhere. But uh, what we can do next is to measure the temperature of the low pressure uh, AC line that comes out of our evaporator and comes back around in the engine bay to our AC compressor. And this is the line that comes from our evaporator through the firewall back in the engine bay area and comes back around here and goes back to our AC compressor. Alright now this infrared thermometer is not working well with this uh, the lower temperature that's on this AC return line for some reason and I've tried different angles and uh, gotten closer further out nothing seems to be working. But it does feel very very cold to the touch in fact I would say it's about uh, Maybe low to mid 40s. All right, so there we had about uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit on this uh, AC return line. Now, if you guys, if this didn't feel cooler to the touch, then there's a chance that your expansion valve or orifice tube is not working properly, or your evaporator uh, might be clogged up as well. All right, so that was the process of uh, trying to diagnose problems with your AC system without an AC gauge set. And I should mention that uh, that whole process we just went through that uh, was uh, thanks to uh, one of my YouTube viewers that made a comment on my uh, last video. That was an older version of the uh, video we're just doing here by the name of uh, slashandburn.co.uk. So if you're watching, thank you, sir. And I'm sure many other people thank you as well. But uh, now let's uh, get on to how you can diagnose problem with your AC system if you do have an AC gauge set. So if you have an AC gauge set, what you want to do is actually first find your uh, base uh, pressure, uh, which is going to be in PSI, and this is going to vary based on your, uh, the temperature and the humidity in the air when you're taking your uh, pressure readings uh, using your AC gauge set. And the way you can find this is to just go to your uh, repair manual. Uh, most repair manuals have them. If it's a good repair manual like all data or Mitchell on Demand, you should have a problem finding your uh, base pressure readings. Now let's say for the sake of argument this is our uh, normal pressure readings and this is somewhat proportionate. It's usually going to be in this ratio. Uh, your high side is going to be this much higher than your low side. But now let's say for the sake of argument that uh, your readings are the same or practically the same. Maybe within a 5 or 10 degrees difference. But uh, if you get this reading that means that uh, basically the pressure on your high pressure side and low pressure side is almost the same. And uh, the thing that builds up pressure on our AC system, it's going to be our AC compressor. Now, if the pressure is the same on the high pressure side and the low pressure side, that basically is going to mean that your AC compressor is not building, is not compressing the air on the high pressure side. Your uh, AC compressor uh, has uh, these check valves that are both on the high pressure side and on the low pressure side that on this side, okay, we'll only let 
refrigerant get in, and on this side we only uh, let refrigerant get out. And if those check valves go bad, then uh, you know refrigerant is going to go back and forth between those two sides, and both sides are going to have the same pressure, and you're going to get this reading. And therefore, if you get this reading, then you can conclude that your AC compressor is not working properly, and you need to replace it. All right, next let's talk about the second set of numbers we got here, which is 25 on the low side, which is lower than our base pressure, and 175 on the high side, which is also lower than our uh, base pressure should be. And so whenever you get these numbers where it's proportionally lower on both sides, then the most likely scenario is that you're low on refrigerant, and you need to add refrigerant to the system. Now, it's obviously not low enough for your ACE pressure, uh, hasn't disabled your AC uh, compressor clutch, but it is low, and in order to get that nice cold air coming out of your vents, you just need to basically add refrigerant to the system. All right, next we'll talk about this third set of numbers. And on this scenario, we got uh, 25 on the low side, which is lower than our base pressure. But we got 350 on the high side, which is a lot higher than our base pressure should be. And whenever you get numbers like this, it just means that uh, something on, the, on your high pressure side is clogged up. And therefore, the pressure can't relieve as, as, its, uh, as its normal rate. And the most likely uh, culprit is going to be usually your expansion valve or your orifice tube. Because that's where the smallest opening is throughout your whole system where your refrigerant passes through. And at the same time, these are susceptible to getting clogged up and whatnot. So, you know, what happens is these get clogged up and then the pressure builds up behind this in your high pressure side. At the same time, since the refrigerant is not passing through these as uh, easily as it should, the pressure on this side uh, is lower than what it's supposed to be. And you basically, uh, in order to fix that problem, you're going to have to either replace your expansion valve or your orifice tube, depending on your car's making model. All right, and that's all there is to it. So if you find anything in this video useful, please give this video a thumbs up. You may also want to consider checking out some of my other related videos regarding uh, other AC work and repairs. And I'll put a link to those on the screen so you can just click on them. I'll also put a link to them in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.